Okay, so um, I'm going to start. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I'm Yun Zhang, and I'm from uh, Dr. Jiang Spence Group. And today I'm going to introduce the uh, uh, 3D matching paper by Dr. Sanjua Ivanov. So here's the new paper. So in this paper, they um, proposed a new way to match the data. So the the feature the feature of this method is in uh, like a title. So it's the mapping like a continuous like a reciprocal space. So notice the continuous. So in the uh, classical like a uh, method, so they are actually mapping uh, uh, black spots, right? So the black spots are discrete. Are, are discrete. So uh, for this paper, they introduce a new way to uh, mapping uh, continuous like a uh, reciprocal spaces. I will like uh, illustrate this idea later. On. So uh, first, I will give you some like uh, uh, basics on. Uh, diffraction. So, um, so notice now here the first equation here. So this gives the uh, diffracted uh, photons on the detector. So this is quite like a complicated equation. So notice the term. So the first the G0 is the uh, incident uh, is the is the incident flux, and the F here uh, F here is in the uh, structure factor. That's the what we want to measure. And I is in the cross section of an electron, and the P is like a polarization factor. Uh, the this like a sine term, the three terms, which means like there are three dimensions. So the sine terms are I, w I would call it like a, a shape transform like a term, and the last one is the uh, solid angle. So this test, so this formula gives you the uh, the uh, number of photons measured at each pixel on your detector. So I will okay. So the second one I, I make a uh, uh, structure factor equation for structure factor. So the uh, the rho r is the uh, density of a protein. So the shape transform. So this gives you the uh, relation between uh, real space and the reciprocal space. So delta k, I use delta k instead of uh, hkl because um, hkl used to denote like a discrete uh, the, posi the, the position of uh, like a discrete uh, like a flux. So for delta k, it can be like some fraction number of uh, hkl. So it's going to be um, uh, coordinated in like a continuous, like a reciprocal space. So that okay. I will show you later on in the you know, uh, next slide. So here's another term I call like a shape transform term. And the N1, the N1, N2, and N3 are the number of like a unit cells in each dimension. So because the N1 tells you the number of like a, each like a unit cell, N, Unit cells in each dimension, so it usually call like a shape transform. So it tells you the rough shape of the uh, crystal, so how how long and how width in each dimension. And uh, in the end, I write uh, the uh, i is roughly proportional to the structure factor square and times the, the uh, shape transform. So the i is the um, intensity you measure at, at the um, at each pixel in your um, diffraction pattern. So the next, so this because this method, uh, tell, um, the feature of this method is going to map the continuous reciprocal space. So I would like to introduce the, like uh, the uh, shape transform a little bit further. So the next slide, so I just use one term to show example. So um, to show the uh, shape transform. So if there's just if there's only one like a uh, unit cell, so the S would be one. So let's go back to check a little bit later. So the i is proportional to structure factor square times the uh, shape transform. Actually, the first term is very small. The first term is very small. So if you have like a only one unit cell, the diffraction is all, it's always like a very low resolution, and it's um, it's, it's barely like a diffract like uh, in act, uh, X rays. So when it's one, so you get you get like a continuous like a diffraction. So actually, f is like a continuous in reciprocal space. So, if you have like a, so in the second graph, so if you have like a number of like a five unit cells, so you see some like a, a black spots and like some peaks here, but you also see some like a fringes in between here. So that's that's uh, what you will see in like uh, nano crystals. For nano crystal, you usually see some like uh, uh, fringes in between the black spots, and here are some fringes, and you can also uh, tell the number of unit cells in in that direction. And by like a counting the fringes, so five fringes, uh, so three fringes means like a five. Uh, in between the black spots, it means like a five. Uh, you need the cells. 
but you, then you can check the uh, the, the uh, shape transform term. So when you have like a five like unit cells in that dimension, the mark the peak at the uh, the peak is like a 25. So which means your singular is amplified by like a 25 times. Now let's go to the third one. So if you have like a uh, a large crystal, so you have like a 50, you have 50 like unit cells, and you will get like a shape transform like that. So it's very sharp, so you get like a, that's what you save for like a, diff, um, uh, you save from like a diffraction, uh, from like a um, very big crystal, so you see very sharp like a black spot, and uh, nothing in between, so, and the, you see the amplitude maximum is like a 2500, so which means the singular is amplified even larger, and for three dimension, you have like a, so if you have like a big crystal, uh, you, so this is one dimension, you have like a three terms, so, then you can get a very high, get a very strong signal by growing like a very high crystals. But you have, when you have a high crystal, when you have very large crystal, you miss like information in between the black spots somewhere here. Okay. Now next I will show you some example from like a real diffraction pattern. So this is like a diffraction pattern from like a one single particle. It's from like a virus. You can see it's like a continuous in like a invisible protocol space. You can see some symmetry because the virus is like a, because the symmetry of a virus itself. So this is a diffraction from like a single particle. And um, this is the uh, uh, sample diffraction from like another crystals. So this is like a black spot here. But you can see all you can also see many like a fringes and like a, in between the black spots. When you if, so you can you can guess the uh, number of unit cells from by counting the number of fringes. So like what we see here, so just count the fringes here and you can see you can tell the how many like uh, unit cells. And so, this so our method works like um, very good for like uh, this case because our like uh, classical like uh, magic method they only like uh, count like a uh, discrete black spots. So the first so when they do indexing, you know, they they find out the they index like each like a black spots, and they count they they also uh, measure their intensity, and they only take this black spot information, but they discuss they discard all the information between the black spots. And they, so in the, the classical mass, they discard a they discuss, uh, discard a word like um, uh, intensity between the black spot. But our new method, because we're mapping everything back to reciprocal space, so the the, the intensity information in between the black spots is preserved with the this, with the three D matching method proposed in this paper. So the, this is for another crystal, and you can see like a period, periodic like a black spot. So here's one, and this one is one. Okay. So the next thing is like a, for like a big crystal. That's, the, that's a, uh, from PS2. Okay. So if, a, if for a micro crystal, when your crystal becomes bigger, and you can see like a, a very discrete like a black spots, so like that. Okay. So now I'm going to take, tell you something about the uh, mapping. So here's how we just uh, map the diffraction pattern to reciprocal space. So the diffraction pattern is the what's the diffraction pattern is the real pattern we measure, we connect it from our detector. And reciprocal space is just a, is just a mathematical like a, um, idea. So here, so this equation it tells you how to um, measure the, uh, how to map, map the uh, uh, spores back to the reciprocal space. So when you get a diffraction pattern, and you say you find it, so you find these peaks, and you identify these peaks as a black spots, and then you measure the uh, actual x and y position in the diffraction pattern. And with this equation, you can calculate the uh, the, um, the 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 uh, position in reciprocal space. So you assign the intensity of this position to the uh, to the to a structure factor that corresponds to certain like uh, a structure a certain like a uh, uh, vectors in reciprocal space. So x is the um, uh, coordinate on the um, um, on diffraction pattern, and number is the wavelength, and d is the uh, camera lens. So it's in the distance between your detector and the uh, crystal. So here's like a graph and shows you how to uh, map uh, between the diffraction pattern to the um, reciprocal space. And notice here, so if we already just map like a Black spots, so we count like a new, it means like a disc, discrete like a mapping. But uh, for three D mapping, so we map everything on, on the uh, detector and back to a reciprocal space, so you get a, like a continuous one. And now I'll show you so something more about like a classical mapping. 
So for the classical like uh, way of doing like a data analysis, so you get an image and you find you do the peak like a detection, and then you use like a most frame or DRX to uh, index them. So basically, you find the uh, orientation, and you uh, you assign like a HKL values to the um, to each spots, and then you also and then you you have a, then you just uh, uh, you you get a, a list of like a peaks for or uh, for each like uh, diffraction patterns, and then you will just uh, do integration to to get like uh, structure factors. So basically, it's like classical magic. But for like uh, the 3D matching proposed in this paper, it's a little bit different. So we also have patterns, and we also do use like a uh, MOS frame or some uh, indexing like a program to do like a uh, uh, indexing. But for here, we we only like uh, use the um, orientation information at this stage. So basically, we don't use like a um, um, uh, we don't do like a background subtraction. We don't do anything at this stage. So we only use the orientation. And we don't do like a scaling, we just use the orientation. Uh, so when you when the orientation is determined, so we map back to the risk group space. So just like that. And just the one direction, and then and if you have get another like a pattern, we we just uh, or, reorient it to some position to get like a full like a diffraction patterns, like in the uh, risk group space, and then we do like a, a scaling and a way to like a background size subtraction and we can get the uh, um, the the uh, the like a um, reciprocal space, like intensity distribution in reciprocal space, and then we do refinement. So for refinement step, it's uh, same for two di for for the, for the two methods, not the same. But all the, dif the only difference is here. So we only use the orientation information at this step uh, to to match first, and then we do scaling, and then and then we do um, yeah do refinement stuff. So here are some like a results from the like a paper. So um, the A, so the the, uh, the 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 top, the upper one is in the uh, is a slice from the reciprocal reciprocal space. So this is not diffraction pattern. It's, it's it's a reciprocal space. So just a one slice. I think it's from like a uh, HK HK zero. I think, yeah. So in this in this pattern, you can see some like a, like a continuous like a see some like a fringes like a between black spots, but it's very you can't see like a very clear, but uh, I think uh, yeah, just let's see. Oh, let's go back. Yeah. So the top, the, the bottom one is like a simulated diffraction pattern. So using like a finite crystal with five times five, uh, five by five millimeter cells. So this is from real data. And this is from like a simulation. So they're very close. The point in this figure is that you can see some like a fringes in between the uh, black spots uh, like here. But least in the bottom graph is, is more clear, so you see something like a fringe in between here, and that's it's the uh, uh, matching. So this graph figure shows the uh, single to noise ratio is like uh, improved, like a, like a higher resolution. So um, so this sort of A is the um, let's see, so A is like a single short diffraction pattern, and B is like a, is the um, is the same is is the uh, evil sphere nice to the uh, match the 3D diffraction volume. So B is like a, is the uh, data after matching, and we take the same position, same like orientation, and we get this stuff. So and the same D is like a, is in a, a peak profile. So uh, from the match the like a diffraction patterns. And so for C, I think it's the middle, the like this peak is like a, um, I think it's 600, and this one is like a 46000. So you can see the uh, peak is still like a um, uh, very sharp, and even in the high resolution, the peak is still very sharp. They have very good like a single to noise ratio. And the, ease, the last one is the uh, intensity distribution for a single for a single like a uh, short. So just for comparison. And uh, okay, so they also talk about the R spin and the CC values. So. Um, they use this method to also can, um, do like an indexing. So they do a comparison. Comparison. So for this one, as you can see, for like a semi for a semi trice data, so the um, the so the data after like a three D matching method, you have like a better like a um, um, R speed, better like a figure merits. So you can see uh, this figure is like R speed. So 
Yes, up 3D I can imagine. So they have like an S R speed and they have a higher like a correlation uh, value. And this and this method works much better for like a data like a without a theme symmetry. So as shown in like a in the big graph. So for here. Um, yeah. Okay. So okay in a future development. So. And this side can application to integration and, re and the refinement of a database with partial reflections. So for partial reflection, you because the Ebola sphere uh, only cast the part of the black spot, so you get uh, like a partials. And this because this method they map everything back to your risk progress speed. So it can patient, it can like a uh, potentially like have um, relieve the like a uh, partiality problem. And the second point uh, mentioned in the paper is that it can uh, to data improvement through the post refinement of the diffraction patterns orientation and the scaling against the like, three dimensional intensity model. So they match it like a first and they can use that uh, they start from the model and they can refine again to find to optim to uh, optimize the uh, orientation problem. Um, the last point I mentioned in this, uh, in this paper is about the uh, uh, is about the uh, assembling the continuous like a three dimensional reciprocal space intensity. Um, provides access to real information for the crystal structure. But so this so this point is uh, um, so um, it's specific actually it's specific specifically for nano crystals when you can uh, see some like a fringes. So if you have some like a, so if you see like a fringes, if you map things back, um, when you count the fringes, you can you can get a shape transform. If you divided the risk progress space um, by like a shape transform. Then you get the reciprocal space for like a single unit cell. So for single unit cell, because you have always sampling, so then you can uh, uniquely solve that structure and by like a um, higher by, uh, by the hybrid implant opera algorithm by some like a iterative like a phasing algorithm. So um, yeah, I think the pretty much that's what it's kind of a quick. So any any questions? Okay.